Hello everybody. I'm back today with prayers and the people who prayed them and we're taking a look at the prayer of Jabez which comes from 1 Chronicles 4 verse 10. I've been reading it out of the uh, this book that I have which I think is based on the New King James Version. Um, but what I wanted to do today was read it out of a different version. So uh, first I'm going to read it out of the New International Version. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will not, so that I will be free from pain. And the Lord granted his request. Now you can see that's a little bit different from the one in the New King James Version, just a different translation. The, the New King James Version says, and Jabez called out to the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him his request. Um, this idea of keep me from harm, and in the New King James Version says keep me from evil. It's it To me... It reads a little differently when we say keep me from harm, doesn't it? Instead of keep me from evil. I think keep me from harm means keep me from anything that's going to hurt me. But anything that's going to hurt me is evil. But when we say keep me from evil, at least in my head, it, it kind of brings up memories of me making mistakes and doing things that are wrong. Um, choosing the wrong way and choosing to do something that I know isn't right or... Um, you know, gossiping, uh, talking about people, refusing to go to church, getting away from prayer. You know, I mean, just things that would be my faults. Envy, jealousy, um, lying, anything like that, to me, is evil. But then I think of that in a little bit different category than, say, if I get sick or if I, um, if someone is mean to me or if I'm left out of something, or my feelings are hurt. But that's evil also. I mean, it's harm. Those are things that happen because the world is not a sinless place, because the world is, is filled with problems. Humanity is filled with problems because of the fall of humanity into sin. So whether you're using the word evil, or whether you're using the word harm, you are still talking about bad things, bad things in life, you know, stuff happens. And it isn't what God wants for us. Sometimes it's of our own making. Sometimes it's it's just because we live in a sinful world. Sometimes it's another person that's doing it. But all of those things could be translated either keep me from evil or keep me from harm. I was thinking about um, this this particular phrase of keep me from harm. Another version uh, says keep me from trouble. Okay, and there again, it can be trouble that I make myself because of my mistakes and my failures and my uh, character flaws and my sins. Or it can be trouble that just comes on me because we live in a sinful world or because other people aren't behaving the way they're supposed to behave. So either way, keep me from trouble, keep me from harm, keep me from evil. I think, first of all, the first thing I noticed about this is that this phrase that Jabez used really acknowledged his humility, his understanding that the Almighty can control things that he can't control, and an acceptance of the fact that God is great and I am not. And this should really always be in our prayers. And I, I, I really struggle to be sure that this is there somewhere in my prayers because we can become pretty uh, prideful people. We can start thinking of, um, help me do this and help me do that, and I can, I can handle this and I can handle that. And here he's saying, I know trouble is going to come to me. Harm is going to come to me. Evil is going to be there. And these are things I can't always control. And Lord, keep me from that. You know, you are the one with the power. Uh, so I love that humility that Jabez says in this prayer. And when we pray this prayer, if we use it verbatim and we pray it, we need to find that humble attitude, that humility of understanding that God's power is great and ours is not. 
So that's the first thing I noticed. And the second thing I noticed is that he says that you would keep me from evil or you would keep me from trouble. Therefore, he's acknowledging that God's power and strength can come into him and help him to do things that he couldn't do without that strength. So he's acknowledging the fact that in his own humanity, he can't do it. But with God, all things are possible. Even getting through trouble that could be the worst thing that happened to you, God can see you through it with his strength. If you're depending on yourself, you may not have the strength to get through it. But God says, I can give you the strength. And that's what Jabez is saying here. Oh, Lord, that you would keep me from evil. In other words, he's asking God to give him the strength to do things that he cannot do on his own strength. Another thing I noticed was just that when you're asking God that you would keep me from evil, that word keep me means, you know, evil is going to be there. Could you keep me away from it? Could you guide me in another direction? Could you keep me safe? It's kind of like asking for safety, but also asking God to open up my eyes to places and people and things that might not be good for me, even though maybe I'm drawn to them. Maybe I want to do a certain thing. Uh, we were talking the other day about some people who, um, uh, good Christian women who are in my Bible study, you know, people who, who said, you know, they'd been in situations where the whole crowd was going to a particular place um, where there were things going on, uh, um, entertainment, let's say, that wasn't, that was more um, of a sexual nature, you know, um, stripping or, you know, something like that. And you get involved with a group and you don't want to be the one that says, oh, no, I'm not going there, you know. And this prayer is saying, Lord, have, give me the strength to do that, to say, this is not a place I need to be. And I'm going to say no, even though the crowd might be doing it, you know. Um, we're asking God to keep us from situations that are not good for us. I know I was telling you, I think, in another session that one of the things I God led me to do was, was not to go into the coffee room as often and sit and gossip with people because I could not keep myself from gossiping and I didn't want to gossip. And so um, one way to do that was simply to stay away, you know. And here, this is what Jabez is saying, Lord, keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. It also can be those kinds of things that you will never know that God kept you from evil. So often, uh, I started out for work and then something would happen, I forgot something or whatever, and I'd go home and get it. And on my way to work, I would pass a huge accident. And first thought I had was, would I have been in that accident if I hadn't gone back and gotten that thing? Would I have been 30 seconds earlier or two minutes earlier or five minutes earlier? And sometimes I think God protects us that way. He just keeps us from making decisions that are going to cause us harm. And this is another thing that Jabez is asking. There are many times, Lord, that I don't know everything, but you do. So... Let me just accept your hand in my life, your guidance in my life to keep me safe in all things. It's, it's really a, a very secure, beautiful part of the prayer uh, to say, Lord, that you would keep me from harm. Uh, and I guess another way to think of that, too, is shield. He's asking God to be his shield, that if harm is there, that it doesn't get all the way in to wreck him. You know, things are going to come against us in life. Um, that is inevitable, right? It's inevitable. The trick is to really pray that God would allow you to weather those kinds of things without letting them really get deep into your psyche, <laughs> into your heart, and wreck your life. You know, um, a lot of that is choice. We have to choose not to dwell on those things and to put our eyes on Jesus. Um, and, and that's another way that God can protect us, is just by keeping our eyes and our ears on things that we he would want us to see. Um, and things that won't be good, we're asking him to protect us from things that won't be good for us. Um, it goes along really with, with another verse that we've looked at before, but it, it still is one of my favorite verses. And it's 
It's God's instructions on what to think about. How do we keep our thoughts in line with God's thoughts so that we can keep uh, influences from coming into our heads that would harm us? So this verse is in Philippians. It's Philippians 4, and it's um, verses 8 and 9. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So how does God protect us from harm inside our minds? You know, by encouraging us to think about godly things. You think about something pure, something wholesome, something wonderful, something beautiful and lovely, something praiseworthy. Um, and, and just thinking about things that, are, that we've learned from, from Jesus or the way Jesus would ask, act or something we've heard him say. Thinking on those things is a protection of, of sorts, a shield from our brains, that we won't be dwelling on information or images or things that are actually going to eventually harm us. And this is Jabez's prayer, that, Lord, you would keep me safe from harm. Protect my mind, protect my body, protect my family. Um, just be with me in every situation so that I don't have to be influenced by whatever evil is out there. Um, that That's a beautiful, beautiful image, I think, and a beautiful prayer to pray that your thoughts would be with God, that, that God would cleanse your thoughts and keep them thoughts that are godly, not thoughts that are going to harm you. Because everything begins really with a thought, doesn't it? I mean, you know, a thought leads to a bad attitude if it's a bad thought. You know, a bad thought can lead to a bad action if, it, if it's a, a thought about doing something. There's so many things that can stop right at the thought level. If we're asking God to keep us from harm, then we're asking him to filter our thoughts and, and keep our thoughts on him instead of on worldly things or things that are going to lead us astray. Um and then, of course, we have to kind of control what comes in, too, you know, because garbage in, garbage out kind of thing, too, you know. So if we're spending an inordinate amount of time looking at garbage TV, then, you know, our thoughts are full of garbage, you know. I mean, there are such wonderful things we could be watching or reading or talking about. Um, and, and I guess that's inherent in this prayer, too. Oh, Lord, that you would keep me from evil, keep me from harm, keep me from going in that direction, you know. Um, overdoing it, getting off kilter here by getting, you know, way off into one direction or another is, a, is another way that we get into a lot of trouble when we overdo it, you know. Um, the other thing that I thought of really is this verse in 90, uh, Psalm 91, which I think is, again, such a beautiful verse. It's verses 4 to 8 of Psalm 91, and it says... Um, well, let's start with, yeah, let's start with, with four. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near to you. <clears throat> that whole thing is all about God being our refuge and shield, protecting us from evil. It says we don't have to fear the terror of night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence. Those are all evil things we, that we don't have to fear. Um, and then it goes on in verse 9 to say, If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in 
all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. See what a beautiful, uh, faithful God we have. That he has messengers, angels, and he would send those angels down as another way to keep us free from evil and keep us free from harm. That they would be his messengers to show us what we need to be avoiding so we don't strike our foot against a stone and that we don't have to be afraid of terror or pestilence or arrows that fly by day, you know, anything like that. Um, because we, we can be sure with this prayer, we can be sure that God is saying yes to this, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from harm, that you would keep me from trouble. That doesn't mean that there won't be any harm or be any trouble, but it means God will shield you from whatever you're going through, that he will be with you in that time period, that he will guide you in another direction, that he will help you with your thoughts, that he will comfort you in your sorrow. You know, there are going to be some bad things in life, but that doesn't mean that we have to be totally overwhelmed by them. God will keep us and he will send his angels to just lift us up out of that evil and harm so that we don't strike our foot against a stone. So that's another another part of this keep me from harm that made me think of when I was reading this, that we are basically praying humility for his kingship and his power and his control that we're that we're praying his strength not my strength that we're praying his eyes to see danger or to see problems instead of our own eyes that we're praying his angels to come and protect us and we're praying his way instead of my way and we're praying his thoughts not my thoughts these are all ways that God is going to keep us from harm and in Psalm 5 one through eight. This is kind of reiterated. And I thought we would read that one too, because it's really, it's beautiful. It says, listen to my words, Lord, consider my lament, hear my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay requests before you and wait expectantly. Now here's the part about evil. For you are not a God who is pleased by wickedness. With you, evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. But I, by your great love, can come to your house. In reverence I bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Here he is saying that our God is a God who does not like evil, who does not like evil and will keep you from evil if you ask him to. And I just love this verse about the bloodthirsty and, no, you hate all who do wrong, you destroy those who tell lies, but I, by your great love, can come to your house. In other words, it's nothing I've done. It's by grace, by your great love that I can come. You know, so we're totally humble, depending on God's great love and grace to ask him to lead us away from evil and to keep us away from harm and keep us away from tr trouble because God doesn't like that. It says, for you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. God doesn't like wickedness. He doesn't like evil. He doesn't want you to be in trouble or be, be in harm. And we say, lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. So here we're saying, God, I want to go your way instead of my way. I don't want to go the world's way, the way all of the evil people are going, the way of wickedness. I want to go your way. So there is um, humility in that part of the verse as well. So all of these verses are supporting what Jabez is saying in his prayer, Oh Lord, that you would keep me from harm. And the second part of this, of course, goes on to say that I may not cause pain, and other versions say that I may not be in pain. So we're going to take a look at that probably in the next session, of always remembering that Jabez himself was named Pain, <laughs> which... Is not a very nice name, I don't think. But obviously, he 
had to live with that his whole life. So I'm sure he understood what pain was all about. And yet humbly, he goes to the Lord and he says, Oh Lord, that you would keep me from harm. We can pray Jabez's prayer today just as powerfully as he prayed it all those centuries ago as it was written in Second in First Chronicles 4.10. Um, and I would encourage you to do that. Include this in your prayers as you're doing your, your meditation today. Just take some time and, and pray this prayer. Um, it's a beautiful prayer. And, and Jabez obviously was a beautiful person because he was more honorable than his brothers. And there's nobody else in this whole list that that is, is, is explained that way, that's described that way. Everybody else is just listed. Jabez must have been somebody special to pray this prayer. So if you feel like including it in your prayers, that would be great. And until we meet again, have a wonderful day.